Oh, hello. This is Tak Chung from Walk with Tak. And welcome to my YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. And when my friend Leah first moved to Washington D.C. to work for the federal government, she rented an apartment. And she was disappointed when she discovered in this apartment there is a glass top electric stove in the kitchen. And like many people, Leah was under the impression. Only gas stove will produce enough heat for stir frying. Partly because of all the famous pictures of uh, restaurants, uh, they stir frying in this very very powerful gas burners, and that they can cook anything in an instant. And therefore, when you cook on a light duty gas stove or an electric coil stove like this one, or a modern version of an induction stove, it's just not going to do it. And consequently, the idea that only gas stove. Is suitable for stir frying、uh, has more or less take hold in people's mind. I used to hold the same idea, and I cook on a gas stove for almost my entire life. And therefore, in our case, when we decided to change to a glass top electric range for our home kitchen, I said to myself, "I better kiss goodbye、uh, for stir frying," or I just set up a high power propane stove. Outside the house, and this is not going to work very well in a midwestern winter. Unfortunately,、uh, I was wrong about it. Well, it turned out that all kitchen stove, including a gas stove, an electric coil stove, or a flat glass electric top, or even an induction stove,、uh, all provide enough heat、uh, for stir frying.、Uh, in fact,、uh, some of the time it is simply too much heat. And the end result, most people actually reluctant、uh, to do stir frying in their kitchen.、And、my friend Don told me that his kitchen stove produced so much heat and smoke every time when he stir fry, he sets off the smoke alarm. It happened so often to the point that his wife banned him、uh, from doing stir frying in their kitchen.、And、so what is stir frying?、Uh, in principle, stir frying is no different from deep frying. If you can deep fry in your kitchen without generate a lot of film,、uh, you should be able to do that with stir frying as well.、Uh, to really understand how to control the amount of heat that you require for stir frying, it is important to understand what is frying all about.、Uh, the reason that frying make food taste good is based on a chemical reaction known as the Maillard reaction.、Uh, the basic principle of the Maillard reaction. Is that when food is heated to the temperature between 250 to 300 degree Fahrenheit, the molecule on the cell surface of the food、uh, start to interact with each other, and from that it creates flavor molecules. And when you cook food in oil, the temperature of the oil are able to reach about 400 degree or higher, and the end result is create this temperature zone、uh, for Maillard reaction to take place. And、so stir frying is basically a technique is to cook the food at this temperature zone、uh, by cooking them in only a small amount of oil and by constantly stirring them,、uh, you will have the food to reach that cooking temperature.、Uh, so therefore, you really do not need a lot of heat. All you need is to have enough heat to maintain the Maillard temperature zone. Uh, in the following, I'm going to give you four guidelines of how to、uh, keep the wok at the temperature zone、uh, that allow the Maillard reaction to take place.、Uh, guideline number one is to heat the oil as hot as possible before you add the food ingredients to the wok.、Uh, the temperature of the oil is limited by its smoking point,、uh, which is the temperature when the chemical structure of the oil start to dissociate. And this is frequently referred to as the smoking point, and this is when you notice that the oil start to smoke. Oil with a high smoking point has an advantage、uh, because the oil temperature will not be able to get any higher once it starts to smoke. And this is when you're going to add the food ingredient to the wok. As soon as you add the food ingredients to the wok, the temperature oil is going to drop. And it will take some time for the temperature to go back up again. Also, there is a great advantage、uh, to have the oil as hot as possible. Oil with a high smoking point will maintain a higher temperature before you add the food ingredients. And this is 
the primary reason that why you want to use cooking oil with a high smoking point. And there are several different kinds of oil you can choose from. Uh, the second guideline is to match the amount of the food that you put into the wok uh, to the heating capacity of the stove. Again, the temperature of your wok is going to be governed by the amount of the food that you have in the wok. If you have a low capacity stove, when you add a lot of food to the wok, it will take some time uh, for the temperature to come up again. It is not uncommon for the temperature to drop uh, way below the Maillard reaction range. In this case, this is commonly what is known as you are overcrowding your wok. Uh, with different heating capacity of different stove, uh, it would take a little bit of trial and error to figure out what is the right amount of food uh, that your stove are capable to support in cooking in the wok. Uh, in a professional kitchen, uh, they choose to use high power stove uh, because they can cook food much quicker. Uh, this is particularly important when it is in a business where time is an essence. Uh, Kailan number three. It is important to keep the food ingredients as dry as possible before you add them to the wok. Uh, anytime when you introduce moisture into the wok, uh, you will lower the cooking temperature. Uh, most vegetables contain moisture, uh, particularly after you wash them. Uh, you should find a convenient way to dry them as much as possible before cooking them. Uh, when it comes to meat, uh, in addition to drying them with a paper towel, you can also coat them with cornstarch. Uh, by coating the meat with a thin layer of cornstarch, uh, it will absorb the moisture and therefore it will have less likelihood uh, to reduce the cooking temperature uh, of the wok. Uh, guideline number four, cook separately of some of the ingredients and combine them at the end uh, to form the final dish. For example, if you have a dish contain both meat and vegetable, uh, you can cook them separately. You can cook the meat in a different cooking session and the vegetable in a, another cooking session and at the end, you can combine them together. Uh, in this case, you can cook a large dish uh, without overcrowding the wok and hence reduce the temperature in the wok. Uh, with this approach, uh, you can reach the Mela temperature zone uh, using any type of stoves that's available to you. Uh, by following these four guidelines, you can cook on stove of any heat capacities by making adjustments so that you will always be able to reach the Mela reaction temperature range. You can cook on any stove once you learn their individual characteristics of their heating capacity. So in summary, these four guidelines are number one, heat the oil as hot as possible to the smoking point of the oil and use oil with the highest smoking point. And number two, cook according to the heating capacity of your stove. Uh, do not overcrowd the wok. And number three, drive your food ingredients thoroughly before you add them to the wok. And number four, uh, cook any of your large dishes uh, in separate sections and combine them together at the end. And when you use these four guidelines, you should be able to cook in any stove uh, with different heat capacities. I post a video every day uh, to help people to uh, adopt my fast cooking system so that they could cook daily. If you'd like to learn more about my cooking system, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, keep on cooking. I will see you tomorrow.